Hello everyone, I am Erika of BeadingSchool.com and you are watching Coffee Time with Erika, my weekly BD broadcast. Today I'm going to talk about inspiration, how does it apply to beadwork, where can it come from, how to work with it consciously, and I can't wait to hear your thoughts on the topic and also to answer your questions. But first, please let me know. Oh, I didn't even ask my question. And Carol says, hello, can see and hear you. And that's wonderful. Thank you so much for letting me know, Carol. And hi, Lita. And hi, Margaret. And Linda. And Antoinette. And a bunch of anonymous but very kind Facebook users. So you can watch today's video live from the Bidding School Facebook page, from the Bidding School Club, and from YouTube. And in case that I haven't said your name and I didn't greet you personally, is because I do not see your name. If you are watching from the Beading School Facebook Club, which is a closed safe space on the internet only for Beading School beaders, then you need to give permission to my broadcasting program to see your name. You can do that by opening the description of the video and then clicking the link which is in the last sentence. You might need to do it again and again when you are watching a live video, but it takes only two seconds, so I hope that it's not too much trouble. The program doesn't do anything else, just makes it easier for me to answer if you have a question and makes it so much more personal, I think. <laughs> So find the link, please, if you would like to share your name. And in the meanwhile, I would also like to greet Cindy and Laura and Rachel. And indeed, so nice to be here with you all again. And Susan is here, other Cindy, Sarah, Robin, Molly, Sherry, Jennifer, Katja, Ingrid, a third Cindy, Gunnell. <laughs> A fourth Cindy. <laughs> Isn't it funny? Uh, for a while, by the way, it just popped to my mind when I used to have my beat shop in uh, Bratislava in Slovakia, like a real, uh, how do you say, like brick and stone beat shop. Then at the point I had three colleagues, all of them were called Alexandra. It was a bit confusing <laughs> and funny and very good company. I see also Vex and Jeannie and Clarissa and Claudia, Kristen, Yosin, Alison, Erica, Asta, Niti, Cindy's asking, are all the Cindy's born in the 50s? <laughs> Corinne is here and Sharon is here too. And also a bunch of other Facebook users. So today our topic is inspiration. Where can it come from? How to store it when we have lots of inspiration when not, uh, and not enough time and how to work with it consciously. First of all, let's talk about it. What it is when this, uh, what is inspiration? How do we feel when we feel inspired? So we feel inspired when we are stimulated to do or to feel something, especially something creative like beadwork. Writers, dan uh, dancers, painters, all kinds of artists and bead workers too can experience this special feeling. And inspiration comes from many different sources. Sometimes it hits by surprise, but we can also work with it on a conscious level. During our busy days, it's also important to learn how to keep track of ideas, how to make sure that when we have more time to create, we have plenty of ideas to choose from and can avoid feeling stuck with a blank mind. I will share with you how do I do that. 
But before that, uh, before I would share with you how do I uh, do that and where does my inspiration comes from most of them, I would like to show you a book that describes a special state of mind related to feeling inspired. Some of you might be familiar with it. The book is called Flow and it was written by Mihai Cheeks and Mihai. I'm showing you the name. I am lucky to be Hungarian and I can actually pronounce his name, but even if it sounds a little bit tricky, at first I would like to recommend to look into his work as I think it's interesting for us creatives and it can also be applied to any field of work. So hands up first dear readers, who is familiar with the word flow and did anyone read it maybe? And Marta says, a classic in the field, love the book. It's really amazing. I did not finish it yet, but already it's so nice to learn about how it works, actually, how our brains work when we feel in the, that we are in the zone. I would also like to greet in the meanwhile, Marcy, Alexandra, Linda and Sanya and Kim and Kim also knows the book and Lita says I don't know the book but I know about the flow say, state so according to Wikipedia the flow state also con uh, known colloquially as the zone is a mental state in which a person performing some activity is fully immersed in a feeling of energized focus, full involvement and enjoyment in the process of the activity. In essence, flow is characterized by the complete absorption in what one does and a resulting transformation in one's sense of time. Flow is the melting together of action and consciousness, the state of finding a balance between a skill and how challenging that task is. Linda is asking if the book is in English. I think it was translated to all imaginable languages. The one that I am reading is in English. Facebook user friend says, I just ordered it on Amazon. Then happy reading. I think you will enjoy it a lot. It a lot. Ula knows the concept also, but not the book yet. And Deb is here and Joyce is here too. So this concept of flow can be applied with working with our beads too, of course. And according to the writer, Mihai Cheeks and Mihai, we can reach the zone when the task ahead of us is not so easy, but also not too far beyond our skills, and when we feel emotionally connected to that task. And that's where, in my opinion, inspiration comes into the big picture. I love my beads. I love sharing my beadwork with you and to see you being proud of yourselves. And after two beautiful years of the academy, I can also say that we can feel a special connection to our beads very much when there is a story around them, a special source of inspiration that we can immerse also ourselves into. A story, a source of inspiration, or as we call it, a beating school academic team that we are working with. So let's see where does stories come from and, ve uh, and where do sources of inspiration come from in my case and in the case of the beating school academy. So it is a very wide topic and I will talk about the source of inspiration 
that I like to work with, sources of inspiration that I like to work with in general. And we will later also have, also can return to topics like inspiration for color combinations, for example. But now let's talk about teams in general. So one of the most popular sources of inspiration is, of course, nature. And at the moment, I am showing you one of the first jewels that I ever designed. And it was actually the first one that got published in a special creative magazine in Slovakia. Uh, the jewel is called Passiflora. And you can see next to it the flower that I named it after. And then I hope that many of you remember the Tulip Mania team when we got inspired by all the different uh, types of tulips and the Tulip Mania uh, originating in the Netherlands and the tulip flowers brought to us by uh, from Turkey. But when it comes to nature, then it's not only flowers and plants, but as we learned recently, we can get inspired also by animals. So when we talk about the dream of Sibylla uh, th uh, team, then of course there were the dragonflies and the butterflies and many of them brought life in our beaded jewels. And Ginny says in the meanwhile, a couple of years ago, the Jocelyn Art Museum had an entire Victorian jewelry show inspired by nature. Such a beautiful show. And I think that this is actually the most common source of inspiration. Nature, plants, flowers, and I, very, I see it very often uh, in jewels that I see from fellow designers. Then we can also get inspired by special places. Earlier this year, we visited Marrakesh and the Majorel Garden. So you can see on the picture a detail of the villa standing in the Majorel Garden and next to it the saguaro pendant, which was inspired by the ornaments uh, that we can see in the Jardin Majorel and also, very importantly, by the colors that are so special in Jardin Majorel. The place, it can be smaller like this garden, but it can also be a whole region or country. So, for example, the Jewel of the Maharaja collection on the left side with the Jai Summer earrings, it was inspired by a special part of India called Rajasthan. And you can see in this detail that the lines from this uh, uh, from this building standing on the water very much can remind us from the lines of the earrings. And hi, Joanna. Then we can also actually get inspired and this might be a surprising one, by encounters, by special people, by friends. So I am not showing you a picture here because I couldn't find a picture, but this jewel was, in, was inspired by a good friend of mine. And the reason was that when she was bead shopping in the store that I had men I mentioned previously, and I was also bead shopping for myself, <laughs> then after walking around in silence for a few minutes, we showed each other what we selected 
and we just found out that we selected the same two beads, the uh, uh, copper colored fire polished beads and those avocado colored uh, seed beads. So that's why I decided to dedicate this jewel to my friend. So this is called Susanna. And Kata is here too. Then we can also get inspired actually by thoughts, by feelings. It doesn't have to be something that we can literally touch. So the jewel that you see on the picture, it's called, looks like happy and it features all these vibrant colors. However, this was the first time that I was working with asymmetry and with negative space. And in fact, this jewel was inspired my, by my depression hiding under the surface. So that's why I named it Looks Like Happy. And that's why, that's why it still holds a special special place. It's good to remember and it's also good to know that we can get past it. And about the previous note and the Zuzana inspiration, Ginny says, I have crafting friends and even when we shop separately, we end up purchasing the same items. We have influenced each other from working together and crafting together for years. And that's so beautiful. And I think it's so nice to let in that kind of inspiration, not only inspiration by art and nature and books, but also by, by people who are around us. But back to another source of inspiration. So on the left side, you can see you can see the bracelet called Diwali and the picture is taken by the Diwali festival, uh, about the Diwali festival in India. It is the festival of light and uh, it celebrates the uh, winning of light and the good about, uh, over the forces of darkness. And this is an example that even holidays and special days and celebrations can, can, uh, can inspire us. So those lights uh, that are burning to, uh, during the Tivoli festival, they are coming back in the bezeled rivolis in the Tivoli, in the Tivoli bracelet. Last year in November and December, we were actually we were actually working with a similar kind of inspiration. I mean also a celebration. And our Swedish beading friends here will will recognize this immediately. So our inspiration came from St. Lucia Day celebrated widely uh, in the Nordic countries. And during the celebration, St. Lucia brings the light and it's a special occasion for families to come together, share a special meal. And the color red and lots of sparkle are very important on that day. So, this is what we were getting inspired by during November and December in our beading school academy team boxes. Hands up, ladies, that who beaded the sparkly pieces during the Lucius, Lucius Light team. Even today, I saw a beautiful version of the Alizarin pendant. So, of course, it also comes back in different colors later, but it was also beautiful to see all those sparkly and red jewels during last year's holiday season. Susan was there with us and Ginny and Kata. 
Joyce, dear, it was the Diwali. <laughs> and Robin says, yes, I loved it. Katya says, I loved it, beat it, three of them. Yes, you seen it was yours that I saw. It's beautiful. <laughs> and Niti said, loved this team and colors. Sherry also beat it. Rachel. <laughs> so yes, a special day and holiday can also be your source of inspiration. And then, of course, art and pieces of art themselves. So I am showing you now the very first Beading School Academy team called Magic Garden, which was inspired by Art Novel and whiplash lines and flowers and female characters by Mucha and this and this muted uh, greenish and purplish color tones of many images from that era and not long after art novel we were also working with art deco and you can see here the Lempitska earrings and the Chrysler Tower from New York City. And you can see the resemblance of the shape. And also specific pieces, not only whole styles, but also specific pieces can inspire us. So this was the Starry Night team and Van Gogh's famous painting and next to it the Nuenen, Nuenen brooch or pendant. And that brings us also to the current team called Dangerous Liaisons, which is inspired by a book and also through that the whole French Rococo era. And Ladies, do you have a special source of inspiration that you like just a bit more maybe than others? Do you feel more connected to natural teams? Do you feel connected to teams inspired by art, by special places, maybe the holiday ones? Do you have a favorite among these? I'm curious. And Kim is asking, how is the, what is the name of the bracelet? It's uh, with a W, so nearly as, nearly identical as you wrote it, but with a W. And Lita says, the beads themselves talk to me. Is that weird? And not at all, dear uh, Lita. And actually, that's the next thing that I would like to talk about, because it can start with the beads, and then comes a story, or it can start with a story, and then come the, uh, come the bead. So it works both ways, both can happen. And in my case, often beads get accidentally next to each other in an unintentional mess on my bead mat, or when I fail to store them right away where they belong, and the combination just catches my eye. And at the point I start working with them, and while I am playing with uh, the beads, then in the meanwhile, my brain is also working, and then, the beads get connected to a specific story uh, later. And for Cindy, it's the same. The beads and crystals do talk to me. Rachel says the natural themes, flowers, patterns on leaves, insects, and natural colors. I also really love the beadwork that I see. Uh, that is inspired by all kinds of insects. It, it can be really whimsical. Robin says, I'm very inspired by music. And that's so interesting. What kind of music, dear Robin? Of 
for Ginny nature for sure. We have our gardener talking here. Cindy says, I love this pendant. I also like the Maharaja box. Thank you, Cindy. Deborah says, art deco really inspired me. So an artistic style. Niti says, the beads and their colors and shapes also dictate the design. And Laura says, I love natural inspiration and also architecture. I love visiting new places to help inspire different shapes and designs. For Ula, it's the colors. Same for your scene. Seeing this as places and songs and nature help get my inspiration. And Ingrid says, I get always inspired when visiting Bergamo Creative Affair and flowers, nature in general, and museums. And Martha says, I create a contest for myself by using a particular color or shape. And that's where the flow state comes when it's like challenging, but just challenging enough. That's so nice, Martha. <laughs> Uh, for Katya, it's nature and colors. And for Robin, it's color combos from flowers and birds. That's also nice. And Kimberly says, my inspiration comes mostly from pictures of nature or structures. I also focus on color combinations from gloss vases or plates. Susan is inspired by other beaters and their designs. And Sharon says, it's all about the colors for me as well. Takes me forever to pick out just the right combination of col in colors, if colors for a design. And Robin says about her musical inspiration, mostly classical, like the Moldo, Moldova by, by Vedrik Smetana, which was in turn inspired by a river. And that's so nice to see when like a specific theme flows through all kinds of art and it comes back from different artists, maybe from different fields or maybe from the same field. I think it's beautiful to see. So I mentioned to you that it's also possible to learn to find inspiration consciously. And as some of you mentioned, the most important thing to find inspiration is to keep an open eye, to relax, to take care of ourselves, to be able to absorb the word around us and to transform that word into beads by our own personalities. Books and reading, learning about art, going to museums and concerts, listening to music, as Robin says, can all bring fresh thoughts to us. Traveling, getting to know distant places, or at least learning about them on the internet, that what is outside of our homes and our, our comfort zones is so important when it comes to getting inspired. I think we can summarize it that it, uh, it's super important that we try to widen our horizons and we don't stay where we are, but we try to expand our thoughts by getting to know is uh, getting to know new things by meeting people whom, who, who introduce us new topics or show the same topic in a different light. And most importantly, it's, imp uh, it's essential to open our minds before new experiences and impacts. And sometimes it happens that there, I feel that there is plenty of inspiration and then other times it feels like I'm a little bit tired, but, and the inspiration, new inspiration just doesn't want to come. But over the years, I learned to bottle up and preserve <laughs> my ideas 
for a time when I find it more challenging to get inspired by something new. And I have different ways of doing that. The easiest is just when it happens, as you say, that you get inspired by some beats, by some colors next to each other, that I snap a picture with my phone. And that is, of course, the most, uh, and that is the easiest that you can do. But when it comes to shapes, then you can also take notes and draw, as I did in the case of the Serendip Fest. It's the one that you can see behind me. So when I was, when the inspiration came for this, then I was actually traveling in Sri Lanka and I didn't have my beads with me, of course. So I got inspired by <laughs> the gemstones that I saw and especially the stone kind of doormats in front of uh, shrines in Sri Lanka. So one day I sat down and I bought, I bought a notebook intended for six-year-old students learning to, learning to write and read, as you can see on the first page. And I was drawing the shapes and writing down the ideas that came to my mind. So this is super useful to do, but I also lately have one more way of preserving my ideas for the time when I need, when I have uh, when I have more possibilities to start something new. So I have a pegboard on my wall behind my computer and uh, from IKEA and. I have all these little containers on the backboard. And then I start, for example, a little container. This was my little container of ideas for our current Dangerous Liaisons team. And then I put in it everything that I thought that they belong together and they should be included in our team boxes. Of course, the result at the end is very different, or like not very, but somewhat different. But this was a great way for me to bottle up those ideas maybe a year ago. And now finally we can play with it. And in the meanwhile, Joyce says, when designing for my sisters, I use colors they love or fair. I find I do a lot of peyote bezeling and simple edging. How to, decide, uh, to end your designs? Whenever I follow your work each row, I think that it is so cool. I might have stopped there. Then I follow another round and think, wow, that's so neat and so different. And still you do another couple of rounds with still more fun and interesting and fun around with fabulous results. How do you decide to stop or go on? Dear Joyce, what a good question. And actually, let's uh, get to questions. If you have any questions about how do I work with different sources of, of inspiration, then please keep asking them and I will do my best to answer. So this is not easy sometimes to decide. Of course, when it comes to a no one has to be the long design, then it has to be at a point that it's not too much and it leaves you enough space to go on on your own and add your own personal touches. But also, of course, there is a time block that I want to fill, that I don't want a design that takes us five minutes to beat, but also I don't want a design which, last, which uh, we need three hours for, because there is no room for that. So with no one has to read alone, there is this limitation, for example. But... Also, when I am looking now at the new one, the Kumarin, then I had a feeling that I could add to it more, but then it would be 
maybe challenging to keep it flat. So I, I thought that this is enough. And there are already like nice tricks to learn from, from the design itself. So that's also very important for me to, to know that when is a design good enough and when can I stop when I feel that, okay, this really gives you something. Not only is it nice, but it, but it gives you, but it gives you something. And I don't think I can totally answer it to your satisfaction, dear Joyce. It's, I just feel it that now it's done. <laughs> or maybe that's when I, I also often feel it that it would have several different versions. And that's when I try to bring it to your attention during a, a class or in a post that try this, try that. So, yeah. One design can have many, many different versions, actually. And Marta says, sometimes when I'm in a blah mode, I will cut up a UFO and ideas seem to come from destruction. And I think that's such a brave move from you, Marta. And so nice to hear that it actually works with you. And yesterday I brought a little a little confession about how Kumarin was born. And you will see it in a few days, but just a hint that that story about Kumarin coming together on my beadmat, it involves cutting up the result of two weeks of beading and about 40 hours of beading time. And I am 100% sure that if I pushed through with that original idea that I cut apart, I would never be as happy than with the current version that I started from zero again. And... Debra is asking, what bead shape inspires you? Dear Debra, again, what a good question. And actually, I will look up for you a video quickly. Was it a video? Was it a, was it a blog post? There was a coffee time with Erica when the team was the best bead shapes to work with. I just found it. So I will pop the link into, into the comment field. Uh, and from the bead shapes, it depends on the size of the bead, what kind of colors does it come from. But most importantly, the bead shape should be like a good one which leaves and what does it mean for me that it leaves enough room for my imagination there are some super weird bead shapes out there which when i look at them then first i can't imagine more than two three ways of connecting them and then i don't feel inspired i really love the geometric clean lines Mm, I love gem duos. I love, uh, when it comes to cabochons, I love novets, absolutely. Mm, I find that there are endless possibilities that how can I arrange them for a finished piece. Cindy says, in the meanwhile, and Deborah, did I answer, by the way, your question with this? Synthesis in the meanwhile, I am always amazed at the structural engineering of the designs here. And thank you, Cindy. And that is an absolute like must that no matter how the design looks like when I put it down on the bead mat, it has to have a good structure. It has to be sturdy. It has, has to be nice to bead. It has to be nice to wear. So all these factors have to come together. Uh, 
and Facebook user friend says, you have so many beautiful pieces and I have such a hard time finding bruises to go with them. Uh, what I found lately that I went back actually to basics in my everyday casual wear. I wear lots of silvery, grayish, black and sometimes even white in my wardrobe. And then I find it that it's easy for me to add a big colorful jewel because it has like a muted um, backdrop in my clothes. <laughs> I hope it makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> and Ginny says I often play until I cannot find any other things to add so maybe I am limited by my stash and that also is a factor it happens to me too I live in a different country nor not where the treasury is so that is indeed a limitation in my case too sometimes And Robin says, maybe when you get to the point where you are not happy with the design and you frog it, your subconscious mind has already shifted through ideas and retains the ones that actually did work. And Robin totally, even from the version that I cut apart completely, one uh, detail of it is preserved as a little earring for later. And there was also a technical solution that I found intriguing. However, at the point maybe I am not yet prepared to make it work, or it was just not suitable in this specific case, but I took a picture and the idea is staying with me. And from history, I know that one day, it will come useful. So I learned not to grieve too much and not to be too sad about pieces that I cut apart. Of course, sometimes when there is time pressure, which luckily uh, happens less and less as we can work with our beading school boxes, the designer team now a much longer time ahead. So... So, so that helps a lot that I can make mistakes. I can cut it apart. I don't have to be ready tomorrow because I have time. I'm comfortable. So that really helps me with achieving that flow state when designing, for example. So I hope you enjoyed this. And we talked a lot about the Kumarin tutorial and the Kumarin jewel, that is the first signature jewel in the current Dangerous Liaisons collection. And during the next days, the tutorial so it will appear in the bead shop. We need one or two extra days on working on this intricate pattern. But already, I would like to give you a little homework and you can start preparing your bezels in advance. So first of all, you will need a Preciosa Naker Button Cabochon bezeled in the same way as the uh, Gift Oris tutorial explains to you. So you can bezel one of those and you can actually hide the tail thread and leave a long working thread. Then you will also need four pieces of the 10 millimeter low-cut the 10 millimeter low cut cabochons bezeled with square stitch bezel. And I put the information up for you on the screen. So you can bezel four pieces with square stitch, starting with 26 pieces of Miyuki Delicas. Uh, you will add a row of size 15 seed beads on the front, a, size 15, a row of size 15 seed beads on the back. But in addition, you will also need to add an extra row of uh, Miyuki Delica 11 on the back. And that last row for protection should be uh, 
made of certain mucus delicas. I will also post this information. So one delica will be attached to two round 15s. And in the case of the low cut round cabochons, you can secure both the tails, tail threads and the working ends because in, uh, this is an exception. Usually I beat the whole big pieces also in one go, but in this case it will look better if you bezel the cabochons separately. So lovelies, do you have any questions about this little homework that you can prepare for tomorrow? Please let me know. Oh, Jeannie took her academy box to a bidding retreat and she says, the women at the bidding retreat love the academy box I took to show them on Saturday. They all wrote down your information. Everyone loved the clasps and jewels. Dear Jeannie, thank you so much for spreading the word and showing the box to your friends. So if there are no questions about the homework, then I would just like to bring it to your attention that in case that you would like to bid this, uh, bid this jewel in different colors, then I have some good news because today the treasury team restocked the Preciosa Naker button cabochons in the 16 millimeter size that you need as the focal. And they also restocked the Preciosa Naker cabochon boxes that contain 15 colors, two of each of the colors. So in case that you would like to make this in different colors, they are waiting for you. And Facebook user friend asks, so we are only do the four caps. So you need to bezel the Preciosa Naker button cabochons like the Oris with 38, 38 delicas in the first row. And you need to square stitch bezel the 10 millimeter low cuts, four pieces of them. There are no chatons in this piece. So I will also post the information for you later. So you don't have to remember this now. And I would like to mention that uh, every two months in alignment with our Beading School Academy team, we also host a mini challenge for our student selecting a talent winner and also a lucky winner and also rewarding everyone for her enthusiasm. And during the Dangerous Lessons team, as we see the skills and the creativity of our Beading School Academy students blooming, we thought that we would like to invite you for a special challenge in the next, during the next team. So, as always, you can submit any kind of jewels to the mini challenge, but we would like to select the talent winner based on her own design featuring a Preciosa Naker button cabochon in the 16 millimeter size and starting with this square stitch bezel that I uh, uploaded to the bead shop as a gift for you. So the seamless concentrical round circles of beads in the square stitch bezel, they create lots of opportunities for you to expand the design. So if you would like to win, to be the, uh, the talent winner of the next mini challenge, then try working with that base, challenge yourself and create a bigger design based on that square stitch bezel of the Preciosa Naker button cabochon. I am super curious to see that. 
And there is also something else besides the nacre button cabochons that the treasury team was working on today. And Timmy restocked not only, I'm talking about the oval cabochons that also go into the Kumarin pendant. And Timmy restocked not only most of the matte colors of the ovals that you need for the Kumarin pendant, uh, and also other jewels, for example, the together necklace, but she also added a bunch of new glittery colors in both silver and gold colored. Uh, colored clothes. I have to confess that I snatched some of the, uh, those from the treasury, but Timmy knows, so all is well. I have here a more neutral color, but then I also have here aquamarine shine, which is my absolute favorite. And there are just a second. There are now many different ones waiting for you in the Beading School Bead Shop. I'm sharing with you the new in the Bead Shop shelf. And let's see in a moment. <gasps> they appeared. So as you can see, there are also bundles created from the ovals. There are bundles with the golden colored clothes, there are bundles with the silver colored clothes, and they come in two versions. Moon with colder colors and sun with warmer tones. I also really, really love this matte purple. This is not in a bundle as far as I know but the shine ones are all in the bundles. And Ginny says, I loved the first color. That is the gray shine. I have the one in the gold clothes, but there are also smoked topaz shine, tanzanite shine. That is the same color as for the Navets in the uh, Sibilla team. Burgundy shine, hyacinth shine. The one I mentioned, the greyish, light topaz, violet, peridot, the aquamarine, crystal shine, light rose shine, olivine, juicy peach, and the same also in the silver colored clothes. So I hope that you will like this. On Friday, I am waiting for you with another design from the Dangerous Liaisons box called Amiris. It is another jewel named after an ingredient for perfumes. And you can find the material list in the first jewels article and also in our beading school event calendar. We will be working with some shaped beads, paisley duos and diamond duos or gem duos, but also with a preciosa nacre cabochon, the small one, the eight millimeter one in the middle, and some other beads. You will find the whole list on the page. So lovelies, I would like to thank you for your company today. I would like to thank you for sharing your thoughts about the topic of inspiration. It was super nice to read all your comments. And also I would like to thank you for the orders you have placed during the past week. Thank you so much. And for all the beautiful jewels that you uploaded to the Beating School Club. And Robin says, Hopefully, I will have the courage to create my own new designs. Dear Robin, please do that. Please remember that it's all about playing and enjoy the process. Thank you so much, everyone. Have a beautiful rest of the day. Bye-bye.